we ought to take advantage of our club website running on a platform that has blogging capability built into it. So that may be something that you can use as you want to promote yourself as a speaker, as a leader, promote your personal prestige, share things that you have learned, which is a great thing to do. We learn a lot in Toastmasters and using video that can be embedded in a blog or just telling people what you've learned uh, can be a great thing. It can be a great thing for you, but it can be a great thing for the club too, to the, to the extent that your interests and the club's interests overlap which most of us are Toastmasters leaders in other capacities. And so you probably have a lot of experience, a lot of messages to share. So I'm gonna go through some of the mechanics of how you can do that. Now, everybody in our club as of today is actually classified as a contributor to the website. That means you can contribute items, you can't publish them independently. So I have to review them or actually Jacinta as VP of PR will be reviewing and publishing some of them as well. So I'm logged in here as an ordinary member, this testy tester account that I use from time to time for demoing things. And if we go to the back end, we can see uh, a bunch of different options here, including under post, there is add new. I just wanna show you uh, it's actually good to be logged in as a person who has access to less stuff because the, as the administrator, I have a much more cluttered dashboard view. So appreciate simplicity uh, when, when you can get it. And in this, uh, this mode, I actually, even when I'm on the front end of the site, I will see new as an option up top. So I can just go to new post. And my post is gonna be pathways, the ultimate verdict. And I'm gonna post in a paste in a bunch of placeholder code because you don't wanna sit here and watch me type. Now, this is essentially a web-based word processor. So I can alter this as I like. When I highlight a word, I have bold. I think I just cut that. I have bold, I have italic. Um, by clicking on the buttons or doing control B, control I, if I wanna add a link, I get a little pop-up to add a link. And if I am formatting a longer document, I might also wanna include some subheads. So anytime I wanna insert a different kind of content, there are these little plus signs that appear in the margin that say add block. And I'm gonna search for headline or actually it's heading. Uh, and there are different levels of headings, different font sizes. So And actually, I'd like to make this a little bit more dramatic rather than just being a bunch of words. I actually found a YouTube video. Where did I hide it? There it is. A YouTube video by some guy named John M. Quick. And so I'm going to show you that this is one of the things that I love about WordPress is how easy it is to integrate video. So if you can get it up on YouTube, you can just do copy and paste into the body of the post and it automatically adds the code for the player. Whereas you know, a lot of platforms you have to putz with HTML code and embedding that, um, including free toast toast. If I wanna add a regular image, I can go here and again, I'll do my little plus sign. And sometimes you might not see some of these icons because they kind of shift around like the, the little thumbnails on our, our Zoom view. So if you don't see it right away, you could put in say photo, uh, even if you didn't remember that it was image and it would give you the widget that you need. 
and we can go in and put in our widget for how wonderful Pathways is. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, actually, there, there's, there's two schools of thought on that, aren't there? So actually, maybe we should do a pro and con. So I'm going to add this little columns widget. So this divides up my content into two different columns. And I can actually configure it to be three columns if I want. So we'll go back into our media library since we've already uploaded the plus, the happy symbol. And on the other side, we will put our sad symbol. Yeah. All right. Somebody doesn't like pathways. And so we can then go in and add some more content about the pro and con. So maybe we want to add some bullet points. So I'm going to format this as a list. And on the pro side, we have the pathways blogging project. And I'll leave the con sign side to uh, to your imagination. You can decide what, what it might be over there. Uh, oh, lots of complaints about Basecamp. It's getting better, though. So I can save this, and I can preview what I have so far on the website. So I've got my pro and my con, my big pro and my video embedded here so far. Now, a much more basic thing I might want to do is add a link, because the web is based on links. And so I can highlight a word that I want to have a link on, and I'll link that to online. To our website. So it's a good idea as, as you find resources on the web to resort, re link to the places where you found those resources. And by some principle of recipro reciprocity, it tends to happen that those, those links will come back to you in some way. So be generous, and other people may be generous for you. So when I go to publish, it doesn't actually let me publish. Eight minutes. It's going to submit this for review, uh, which means I'll get an email notification and Jacinta will get an email notification saying that there's a pending post that needs to be approved. And we can go in and look at it. We can either just approve it right away or we can write back to the author and say something or other needs to be changed. Uh, we might also fix your spelling and things like that. Now, the pathways project is an opportunity to do a bunch of blogs. I believe it's eight different blogs they want you to create, and then you report back, give a speech about what you learned. And you might not want all eight blogs to be about your Toastmasters experience. You might want to promote your professional image and other things as well. Well, fortunately, there are a number of other resources available to you. Not One many. of one of them I often recommend is LinkedIn. There is essentially a blogging platform built into LinkedIn. So if instead of just posting a social media style post, I go in here, it gives me an opportunity to write a headline, put in my body text. Uh, and actually this is very similar to the plus sign in WordPress. This is gonna allow me to add images, video, uh, and other media. So here is an example of a completed post that I put out just the other day, talking about good and bad uses of images in web and social media. Uh, and if I, this is how that would show up in the feed or in a search. And we can see that other people have also created LinkedIn posts. You know, I mean, if you look at the feed on LinkedIn, a lot of it is really a headline service uh, for different people. But you know you can be on the same level as a professional uh, journalist, 
also when people are looking at your profile, say a recruiter is looking at your profile. Ten minutes. They, they can see your post here and that gives them an idea of the depth of expertise you have and ideas you have to share. So go forth, create blogs, take advantage of this opportunity that you have with the Pathways Project to broaden your horizons. Mr. Toastmaster, or Mrs. Mrs. Toastmaster. Ah, anyway, all right, I fumbled the landing. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm told I have five minutes to answer questions. So, so questions that you may have. Um, I may do an expanded version of this at some point, probably will. So I know I stampeded through a number of things. So Lois. Okay, I have two questions, David. One, you said you're going to review all the posts. Do they automatically get emailed to you or do we send them to you first or how does that work? Yeah, I actually recently added something so that you can put in a, a club website administrator can put in a list of email addresses so that those people will get notified whenever one of those new contributor posts is submitted. So it's, and then it, that, it, whenever and then a post is submitted, who, whenever the post is submitted by somebody who doesn't have their own authority to publish. Uh, and I've done something very similar on our district website. I have a concept of having division blogs. So the, divi the divisions actually have public relations officers uh, and they are empowered to post to the division blog. Um, but our, our leadership wants me to keep an eye on them and make sure that they're not abusing the Toastmasters brand and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and my second question was, in your blog on LinkedIn, it had a picture, but what you were showing us, you had a question is pathways, whatever. Is it that you would have replaced the header with an image and that's how it would start or where did that image actually go? Uh, on LinkedIn, you said? On LinkedIn, on... you had a picture of a newspaper, like an origami newspaper. Yeah. But what you um, were showing the... us was just words. So where would you well, actually put that origami well, picture? Well, I mean, I, 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 I showed this new draft. Yes, the, the, there's, a, there's a, a space for a featured image to go up top. And if you click here, awesome. it gives you the option to add whatever image. Featured image. Okay, that's what I was looking right. for. Thank you. Jim Gold, you got a question. Yeah, I was uh, the pathways. <clears throat> excuse me, with the uh, with the blogging, you said that there are like six blogs that you have to create, or that you can create, or is that one blog with a bunch of posts? My, my understanding. Well, oh no, no, no. Yeah, you don't have to create cre uh, it, eight blog posts. I believe is what it's supposed to be. Okay. Uh, but but what I was suggesting was that you might want to do you know, two or three things that you do on the online presenters website, since that's handy. And then maybe you go over to LinkedIn, you can go to other services. Uh, Chris Gold is an expert on Blogger and Blogspot, so you can ask her for advice on those. There, there are actually lots of options. There's also a, a service called wordpress.com, which is something where you can sign up for a free personal website. Other questions? Thanks. Chris. Yeah, where do you see the most value for toast for individual Toastmasters clubs in blogs? Is it is it uh, teaching blog posts about the Toastmaster process? Is it uh, posts about meet your individual meetings or maybe yeah. about individual members? I, I mean, I, I think it could be a mix of it. I mean, I would encourage people here if you gave a speech, particularly a speech in this club that you're really proud of and you have a good video of it, or you know, we can help you carve out the video out of the, the whole meeting video. We can carve out just your speech. And you could create a post that says, here's how I came up with this idea. Here's how I developed the idea. Um, or, or, or you might want to you know, post your slides or other uh, resources to go along with it, or you know, links to websites where you got information. You know this stuff better than I do, Chris. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, our Stick and Brick Club does a meeting recap that they send out by email. And I love these meeting recaps. And I'm just uh -huh. wondering if that would be a good 
options. But, I mean, I guess you have to make a judgment about whether it's too, um, you know, it's too navel gazing. You know, is it something that somebody who from, I, 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 want, I want to look for stuff that would be of interest to somebody who came to your website for the first time, they're checking out the club and they're going to see, wow, they have great dynamic people there. But Sorry. my time is up, so I'll shut up. And Thank you so much. <laughs> the elective is eight blog posts in 28 days. There is a time limit. Now.
promote your personal prestige, share things that you have learned, which is a great thing to do. We learn a lot in Toastmasters and using video that can be embedded in a blog or just telling people what you've learned uh, can be a great thing. It can be a great thing for you, but it can be a great thing for the club too, to the, to the extent that your interests and the club's interests overlap, which most of us are Toastmasters leaders in other capacities. And so you probably have a lot of experience, a lot of messages to share. So I'm gonna go through some of the mechanics of how you can do that. Now, everybody in our club as of today is actually classified as a contributor to the website. That means you can contribute items, you can't publish them independently. So I have to review them or actually Jacinta as VP of PR will be reviewing and publishing some of them as well. So I'm logged in here as an ordinary member, this testy tester account that I use from time to time for demoing things. And if we go to the back end, we can see uh, a bunch of different options here, including under post, there is add new. I just wanna show you, uh, it's actually good to be logged in as a person who has access to less stuff because the, as the administrator, I have a much more cluttered dashboard view. So appreciate simplicity. Uh, when, when you can get it. And in this, uh, this mode, I actually, even when I'm on the front end of the site, I will see new as an option up top. So I can just go to new post. And my post is gonna be pathways, the ultimate verdict. And I'm gonna post in a paste in a bunch of placeholder code because you don't wanna sit here and watch me type. Now, this is essentially a web-based word processor. So I can alter this as I like. When I highlight a word, I have bold. I think I just cut that. I have bold, I have italic. Um, by clicking on the buttons or doing control B, control I, if I want to add a link, I get a little pop-up to add a link. And if I am formatting a longer document, I might also want to include some subheads. So anytime I want to insert a different kind of content, there are these little plus signs that appear in the margin that say add block. And I'm going to search for headline, or actually it's heading, uh, and there are different levels of headings, different font sizes. So And actually, I'd like to make this a little bit more dramatic rather than just being a bunch of words. I actually found a YouTube video. Where did I hide it? There it is. A YouTube video by some guy named John M. Quick. And so I'm going to show you that this is one of the things that I love about WordPress is how easy it is to integrate video. So if you can get it up on YouTube, you can just do copy and paste into the body of the post and it automatically adds the code for the player. Whereas, you know, a lot of platforms you have to put with HTML code and embedding that, um, including free toast toast. If I wanna add a regular image, I can go here and again, I'll do my little plus sign. And sometimes you might not see some of these icons because they kind of shift around like the, the little thumbnails on our, our Zoom view. So if you don't see it right away, you could put in say photo uh, even if you didn't remember that it was image and it would give you the widget that you need. And we can go in and put in our widget for how wonderful Pathways is. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, actually, there, there's, there's two schools of thought on that, aren't there? So actually, maybe we should do a pro and con. 
So I'm going to add this little columns widget. So this divides up my content into two different columns. And I can actually configure it to be three columns if I want. So we'll go back into our media library since we've already uploaded the plus, the happy symbol. And on the other side, we will put our sad symbol. Yeah. All right. Somebody doesn't like pathways. And so we can then go in and add some more content about the pro and con. So maybe we want to add some bullet points. So I'm going to format this as a list. And on the pro side, we have the pathways blogging project. And I'll leave the con sign side to, uh, to your imagination. You can decide what, what it might be over there. Uh, oh, lots of complaints about Basecamp. It's getting better, though. So I can save this and I can preview what I have so far on the website. So I've got my pro and my con, my big pro, and my video embedded here so far. Now a much more basic thing I might want to do is add a link, because the web is based on links. And so I can highlight a word that I want to have a link on, and I'll link that to online, to our website. So it's a good idea, as, as you find resources on the web, to resort, re link to the places where you found those resources. And by some principle of recipro reciprocity, it tends to happen that those those links will come back to you in some way. So be generous, and other people may be generous for you. So when I go to publish, it doesn't actually let me publish. Eight minutes. It's going to submit this for review, uh, which means I'll get an email notification, and Jacinta will get an email notification saying that there's a pending post that needs to be approved. And we can go in and look at it. We can either just approve it right away, or we can write back to the author and say something or other needs to be changed. Uh, we might also fix your spelling and things like that. Now, the Pathways project is an opportunity to do a bunch of blogs. I believe it's eight different blogs they want you to create, and then you report back, give a speech about what you learned. And you might not want all eight blogs to be about your Toastmasters experience. You might want to promote your professional image and other things as well. Well, fortunately, there are a number of other resources available to you. Not uh, one, of the, one of them I often recommend is LinkedIn. There is essentially a blogging platform built into LinkedIn. So if instead of just posting a social media style post, I go in here, it gives me an opportunity to write a headline, put in my body text. Uh, and actually, this is very similar to the plus sign in WordPress. This is going to allow me to add images, video, uh, and other media. So here is an example of a completed post that I put out just the other day, talking about good and bad uses of images in web and social media. Uh, and if I this is how that would show up in the feed or in a search. And we can see that other people have also created LinkedIn posts. You know, I mean, if you look at the feed on LinkedIn, a lot of it is really a headline service uh, for different people. But you, know, you can be on the same level as a professional uh, journalist. Also, when people are looking at your profile, say a recruiter is looking at your profile, Ten minutes. They, they can see your post here, and that gives them an idea of the depth of expertise you have and ideas you have to share. So go forth, create blogs, 
take advantage of this opportunity that you have with the Pathways Project to broaden your horizons. Mr. Toastmaster, or Mrs. Mrs. Toastmaster. Ah, anyway, all right, I fumbled the landing. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm told I have five minutes to answer questions. So questions that you may have, um, I may do an expanded version of this at some point, probably will. So I know I stampeded through a number of things. So Lois. Okay, I have two questions, David. One, you said you're going to review all the posts. Do they automatically get emailed to you or do we send them to you first or how does that work? Yeah, I actually recently added something so that you can put in a, a club website administrator can put in a list of email addresses so that those people will get notified whenever one of those new contributor posts is submitted. So it's, and then it, that, it, whenever and then a post is submitted, who, whenever the post is submitted by somebody who doesn't have their own authority to publish. Uh, and I've done something very similar on our district website. I have a concept of having division blogs. So the, divi the divisions actually have public relations officers uh, and they are empowered to post to the division blog. Um, but our, our leadership wants me to keep an eye on them and make sure that they're not abusing the Toastmasters brand and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and my second question was, in your blog on LinkedIn, it had a picture, but what you were showing us, you had a question is pathways, whatever. Is it that you would have replaced the header with an image and that's how it would start? Or where did that image actually go? Uh, on LinkedIn, you said? On LinkedIn, on... you had a picture of a newspaper, like an origami newspaper. Yeah. But what you um, were showing that's... us was just words. So where would you well, actually put that origami well, picture? I mean, I, 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 I showed this new draft. Yes, the, the, there's, a, there's a, a space for a featured image to go up top. And if you click here, awesome. it gives you the option to add whatever image. Featured image. OK, that's what I was okay. looking for. Thank you. Jim Gold, you had a question. Yeah, I was uh, the, the pathways, <clears throat> excuse me, with the, with the blogging, you said that there are like six blogs that you have to create or that you can create, or is that one blog with a bunch of posts? My, my understanding, well, oh, no, 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 yeah, you don't have to create, cre it, eight blog posts, I believe, is what it's supposed to be. Okay. Uh, but, but what I was suggesting was that you might want to do you know, two or three things that you do on the online presenters website, since that's handy. And then maybe you go over to LinkedIn, you can go to other services. Uh, Chris Gold is an expert on Blogger and Blogspot. So you can ask her for advice on those. There, there are actually lots of options. There's also a, a service called wordpress.com, which is something where you can sign up for a free personal website. Other questions? Thanks. Chris. Yeah, where do you see the most value for toast for individual Toastmasters clubs in blogs? Is it is it uh, teaching blog posts about the Toastmaster process? Is it uh, posts about meet your individual meetings or maybe yeah. about individual members? I, I mean, I, I think it could be a mix of it. I mean, I would encourage people here if you gave a speech, particularly a speech in this club that you're really proud of and you have a good video of it, or you know, we can help you carve out the video out of the, the whole meeting video. We can carve out just your speech. And you could create a post that says, here's how I came up with this idea. Here's how I developed the idea. Um, or, or, or you might want to you know, post your slides or other uh, resources to go along with it, or you know, links to websites where you got information. You know this stuff better than I do, Chris. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, our Stick and Brick Club does a meeting recap that they send out by email. And I love these meeting recaps. And I'm just uh -huh. wondering if that would be a good option. But, for I mean, I guess you have to make a judgment about whether it's too, um, you know, it's too navel gazing. You know, is it something that somebody who from, I, 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 want, I want to look for stuff that would be of interest to somebody who came to your website for the first time, they're checking out the club, and they're going to see, wow, they have great dynamic people there. But Sorry. my time is up, so I'll shut up. And Thank you so much.
the elective is eight block posts in 28 days. There is a time limit. Now our, uh, our other speaker, our next speaker is going to be Christopher, Christopher Hals. And he is talking, uh, speaking to inform that is where his, um, his source material is. And the title is Preserving Memories. The introduction is that Chris is doing his 21st Toastmasters speech tonight. Woohoo, Chris! As he's almost done with his advanced communicator bronze in pursuit of his DTM in the traditional program. He said normally this speech would be six to eight minutes, but he's adamant that he's going to do it in seven minutes. We can feel the love, Christopher. Now you've got to show you doing day. Welcome, Chris. Christopher. Thank you, Toastmaster Magda, fellow Toastmasters and guests. There's a very famous American song that came out in 1973. You may have heard it. It goes something like, memories, like the corners of my mind, misty watercolored memories of the way we were, scattered pictures of the smiles we left behind, smiles we gave to one another for the way we were. So what are memories? Scientists say memories are made from forming connections in our brains, basically circuits between nerve cells. And according to some articles I read from Rick Huguenar, and he's a PhD of neuroscience at Johns Hopkins University, Memories are complex. They have to do with chemicals, repetition, and can be easily damaged, especially from diseases like Alzheimer's or dementia. In fact, Dr. Huguenar and his colleagues are studying new ways to improve memories with those diseases and also PTSD. But you can probably attest yourself, memories are different for everyone. We all have different lives and experiences and our brains are wired differently. And as I enter middle age, I'm starting to reflect on how to keep memories alive, especially as I meet new, new people and have reason to share my life experiences with them. To me, memories are the most important thing in the world. I feel like I'm a storyteller. Part of why I was put on this earth was to relay information to people in a way that makes them feel like they're going on an adventure. For example, I just recently went on a road trip that I was talking about at the very beginning of the meeting. And for every point of interest we passed, I basically wrote what amounted to an article for my followers. But for me, I'm not just satisfied with living with just the abstract concept of memories. Memories by themselves cannot be touched, held, or stuck in a box. A part of going on these adventures is having tangible things to connect those memories together into something. And so this is how I try to preserve my memories of things that have happened to me or places that I've been. When you have a memento of a memory, I feel like it transports you back to that place. Those feelings you had with the original experiences can come flooding back. Now, I used to be really bad about mementos and I've gotten a lot better than when I was younger because I used to keep proof that I was somewhere from almost anything and everything ticket stubs, business cards, pamphlets, wristbands. I told myself I was keeping these for future research and reference, but knowing that some of this information I would take and actually be now found on the internet, now lessen the need to keep as much as I did. Even still, I have boxes and boxes of old love letters and presents from girlfriends in seventh grade, a flat balloon that someone gave me to the hospital, I didn't even think I still have my retainers. But I will say, as you get older, you do learn to let go of some of that stuff. You can't possibly keep every single memory. Especially if you look at a memento you kept and you have no idea why you kept it. But if something brings back a memory of something I haven't thought about in 20 years and I can remember like it was yesterday, then yes, I'm more likely to keep holding on to it. Now, I love taking pictures. I'm not a professional photographer. I like to think that I am, but I'm not. And these days, it's so easy. I mean, who doesn't have tons of pictures on their phone? However, I will say that I had tons of pictures before it was cool to have tons of pictures. Back when cameras weren't on phones, 
I would take like 10 to 20,000 photos per year. I believe pictures tell a story and that there is beauty in everything, even the ordinary things. My favorite thing to take pictures of are things in juxtaposition. When things extremely old and new are in the same shot, or ironic when you take a picture of the sign that says, no photography allowed. I always take pictures to keep memories alive. Now, the funny thing is I have to admit, I don't really look at most of the photos I take much after I take them, but I do tend to remember things a little better if I knew that I took a picture of it. Which leads back to the science of memories. Dr. Huguenard from Johns Hopkins University says, the more exposure you have to something, even a few extra seconds of taking a picture, the more likely you are to convert a short-term memory to a long-term memory. I just like to say I have an addiction. My addiction's not alcohol, cigarettes, or crack cocaine. It's souvenirs, and they've become a real problem. When we go somewhere on vacation, whether it's the White House or a small rundown shack that is famous because President so-and-so passed away there in 1883, I feel like I have to have a souvenir of it. And not just one souvenir, one of each. Christmas ornaments, shot glasses, keychains, bumper stickers, postcards, tchotchkes. Yeah, it's bad. People even take bets on how much I'm going to spend when I get to the register at the gift shop. Now, I'd say in the last year or two, I finally started to get a little better. I think part of it was when we bought a house and moved, I had to sit there and pack all of it up and it was not fun. I also see how much money it costs. And I've learned to talk myself out of some of these purchases by saying, do you really need this? I mean, it's still pretty bad. Ask anyone I've ever been on a work team with. I'll actually buy them souvenirs too. So it's not bad enough, I'm actually budgeting souvenirs into my vacation, the souvenir fund, but I'm also spending money on people who may not even want anything for my road trip. And they end up doing the same thing to me. I'm sure there's a support group for people like me, but in the end, when I look at these things, I tend to remember being there, seeing something, learning something, and spending money. So how many of you knew the song that it opened up my speech with? When did you think about or what did you think about when I read the words? I guarantee if you heard the song before, I evoked a memory and you thought about the first time you heard that song. Maybe you saw the movie with Barbra Streisand and Robert Redford and remember seeing it in the theater. Maybe your mom sang it to you. Or maybe you heard it for the first time tonight and the next time you hear it, you'll remember my speech about memories and the way we were. Woohoo, how is that for spending quality time together? Another way of expressing love. I just want to say the reason why I say love is we lived in England for a while in Chesterfield and I didn't want to move back home because I was everyone's love. Even though I just go into a shop, they would say, hello, love. Oh, it was beautiful. Now we're at the point where I'm going to introduce our table topics master, Deborah Spears. And hold on to your horses because now the real fun is starting. Deborah, the floor is yours. Thank you. No pressure, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. This is actually my first table topics on since I joined this club, and this would be the day that we have extra time, so I'm supposed to come with more questions. All right. The purpose of this is for to get people to speak, you know, ad hoc, just um, uh, without time for preparing. And I wanted to call on people or ask people to let me know if you particularly are not interested in speaking right now. So let me know that if that's the case when I uh, come to you with the topic or the subject that I'm gonna cover here or actually to talk about in general is about health. It's one of my passions, so I figured why not? And the first um, person, and I guess I'll get a lot of uhs because that's what I do when I'm nervous, so hang with me. 
the first question that I'm going to ask of, I'm pronouncing your name correctly, I hope. Is it Bibi? B I B I H. Is that, did I, did I pronounce, pronounce your name correctly? Hello? You're on, I think you're on mute. I can't hear you. I think you're on mute now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry, um, I forget that. Um, yeah, I didn't know how to use the equipment. It's okay. It's, it's B B B I B I. B. Okay. Uh, the first question is for you. We're talking about health. Oh, if you had to talk about, if you had to um, describe to me a food, a vegetable that you eat because you believe it's good for your health, tell us about that vegetable and why you eat it, why you believe it's good for your health. <laughs> Thank you. I love that question. My favorite vegetable in the world is spinach. Spinach, Popeye spinach. I used to not like spinach as a child, but I discovered uh, that I really love it. And from watching those Popeye movies and things, I uh, believed that it would give me power, superwoman power. Beyond my mom used to say, "Eat this, and you can be superwoman, power woman," and. Uh, that's why I love spinach. And I use it in almost any kind of uh, dish. It's such a versatile vegetable. I put it in my shakes with my celery and apples and have a nice shake in the morning. And I also do a brilliant spinach pie. It doesn't have any crust, just eggs and spinach, green and red peppers. Everybody likes to have, to have the recipe after I take it to Toastmasters events. And uh, it's, it's got iron. It's fresh. It's easily obtainable. And it doesn't cost the earth. Spinach is my favorite vegetable because it's versatile. I feel it gives me iron and power woman status. And I can make lots of recipes with it. In fact, who is the lady who lived in England? I've got this recipe book from England, and that's where I got my recipe from. What's my time? I can't see the timer. Am I over time? That's one minute 45. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's my talk on spinach. Thank you for asking me. Thank you. Deborah, for our guests, can you ask the timer to explain the timing sequence? Of table topics, please. The timing for table topics says you have two minutes, and the timer, the first minute, you'll see green, is that correct? Second, yellow, and when your time is up, or when you have 30 seconds left to go, you'll see red. Okay, thank you. Okay. The next, uh, I have, I don't see Monica, but I see the name. Monica, are you interested in answering a table topics question for me? Monica? Okay. I think she may actually be driving or something. Okay. I'm looking for new guests and members, uh, new, and I'm a new member myself since June, so bear with me here, but I don't see any new names that aren't speaking. So how about Chris? Chris, would you be willing, Chris, would you be willing to answer a question? Perfect, thank you. <laughs> the next question, Chris, is we're still focusing on health. You have to create a commercial and you're going to sell people on the benefits of eating fruit. You have two minutes. Madam Table Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters, fruit 
Fruit is the perfect food. It's colorful. It's readily available. It comes in different seasons and different countries. We visited New Zealand and I learned, did you know that kiwi is not just green? The best kiwi is golden. And I was thrilled to find golden kiwi in our local grocery store. I could live on fruit. Maybe throw in a little bit of cottage cheese here and there, or, or maybe ice cream. Oh yeah, strawberries on top of ice cream. Oh, can I go now? <laughs> I have a refrigerator calling my name. Fruit is so colorful and tasty and good for you. One of the best parts is that it provides you with lots of water. You know, you're supposed to drink all this water every day, but the healthiest people get a lot of their water content from fruit. You don't have to just down a glass of water and just nothing tastes better than ripe, sweet fruit. Madam Topic Master. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next question will go to Cindy. Cindy, are you here? Cindy? Cindy Grover? I think you're... Cindy is the uh, Nashville's on okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can okay. hear you now. All right. You have just... Um, hang on a second. You just left your doctor and he prescribed more laughter. Tell us what you would do to add more laughter to your day. <laughs> There's a lot of candidates and Toastmasters that can help in that regard. Starting with one I see on the screen now, Jim Barber, I attended one of his workshops at a TLI and never stopped laughing. Laughter is the best medicine for anything you do in life. You can't help but be healthy if you laugh a lot. You exercise your body. You can't help but smile as you're laughing and smiling is much better for you than frowning. It encourages everyone around you to also enjoy their day and laugh along with you. I could go on and on for at least 60 seconds about this particular topic <laughs> and watch everybody laugh with me. I see you're all starting to laugh with me. <laughs> Laughing is great. I always wanted to be a comedian just so I could make people laugh. In fact, I'm on the, the uh, storytelling mode. I'm trying to learn from that and learn from people like Jim and others at Toastmasters. And this is such a great forum to test your skills out and learn how to make people laugh and learn how to make people enjoy your stories and take them home and share them with others. So laughing is the best medicine. Madam Ta Table Topics Master. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. My next question is for Lori. Hi, Lori. Are you up for a question? Sure. Can you complete this sentence for me? <laughs> if you let me play sports and include in your answer what that sport would be and why. Well, of course, for Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and Topics Master, the best sport is speech contests. Yay! We love speech contests, right? Now, I have to admit, I've only had one experience in a speech contest for my club a few years ago. No one wanted to participate. I decided I wanted to, but I thought, I don't want to be the only one. That's no fun. That's no contest. So I convinced one of the other members to participate with me to compete. It was the humorous speech contest. But guess who won? I didn't win. No, she won. 
She wanted the club, she wanted the area, she wanted the division, and she came in third at the district. I didn't feel so bad then because she had done so well. She told me later that at the time she was kind of in a tough place in her life then, and my asking her to compete really gave her something to work for, a goal, and it really helped her out in her life. And I had no idea at the time. I just thought it would be fun to have someone to compete against. Now our contest is coming up again soon. I'm not sure if I'm going to ask anyone else to compete. I want to win this time. Madam <laughs> Topics Master. Thank you so much, Lori. Um, uh, Madam Topics Master, according to the agenda, we are now out of time. Wonderful. I mean, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Deborah, for handling the table topic session. Still, we in uh, love languages, and I hope you all had sort of a nice uh, mental touch and thinking about these different table topics and how you would answer it. And now, the highlight of the event. And in his name is all the duenda that I can handle. I mean, having a name like Tiger, how special is that? Tiger is our general evaluator and he's going to take over and he's going to introduce the evaluators and they're all going to give us wonderful gifts, not full of weevils, but that's the type that is melting in your mouth like chocolate. Please welcome Tiger. <laughs> that is a tough act to follow. Thank you, Miss Toastmaster. So, first evaluations for our speeches. Mr. David Carr is going to be evaluated by Elaine. So, Elaine, are you ready to give us your expertise? Yes, indeed, I am. Thank you, Tiger. So I was most happy to be uh, evaluating David this evening. We are very lucky to have such a skillful tech oriented person within our club. You know, he's, he's set up our website and there's so many things to learn here. So he, he excelled at encouraging us to help promote our club, promote ourselves, share a little bit more of our expertise by using this real estate that is right there for us to use, blog, right there on our website. What a great encouragement for us. And also because we have so many people within this club, you know, operating at advanced level, they have multiple DPMs, they've gone through one, maybe they're on their second pathway, they already have an understanding of when you get to level three, you know, then you sometimes have these additional kinds of challenges. So I thought it was great that he even mentioned, you know, this blog thing to do eight blog posts in 28 days. That was very educational and kind of challenging for us. I loved uh, David's um, comfort with which he was talking about this subject. I hardly heard an um and ah or so for David. That's really great. Uh, now, David chose to use the screen share method for a lot of this presentation. And I really wished to educate us and to encourage us to make this process of starting blogging easy that he had actually done like a slide thing. So I would recommend next time for him that he even show us like the example of a blog, what it looks like, what the end result is, and then kind of reverse engineer it and, and set us through the simple steps. I also would encourage him when he starts, even don't go right into the screen share, but have a relevant background behind him. Talk to the audience and ask us, you know, have you thought about blogging? Do you enjoy blogs? Have you blogged somewhere else? Well, do one here. 
those are the kind of things I would encourage him to be including on the next time. Um, he excelled also by letting us know that not only can we expand our PR reach on our online presenters website, but also add this blogging out into other arenas. Now, most of us are familiar with using word processing, so I really appreciate that he shared with us the sim some of the simple steps that we could go through. Well done, David Carr. I hope many people have been inspired as they get to level three. Do some blogging. Very, very nice, Elaine. Excellent evaluation as always. Our next speaker was Christopher and his evaluation is gonna be done by our esteemed Miss Lois. Thank you, Tiger. My fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests, and especially Christopher. Welcome back, Christopher. Preserving memories. <clears throat> no, I'm not going to hurt your voice because I don't want your ears to bleed at this point. But I have to tell you, I thought in the very beginning, oh, he's going to sing. But you just read us the words, and we still evoke those memories. And I thank you for that. You were quoting items, you were citing different people, you were making us think about memories, how we can preserve them and how we lose them. And I myself found that really fascinating. I thought you had some really good transitions on how you were going through some of these areas. And I enjoyed how you pulled some of these things together. Overall, it was a very interesting speech, and every time you were going through this and I was watching Chris post, I'm going, yeah, I've got about, I don't know how many thousands of pictures just sitting on there, and yeah, I don't collect souvenirs anymore, but I was kind of going through understanding where you were com coming from, and that was part of the fun of your speech. You had some statements in there that I truly enjoyed, statements like a picture tells a story and how you love ironic pictures which I do too, because I have them in my Pinterest, just pictures of ironic things. But there are a couple of things that I think you can do that might make this speech just a little bit stronger. Towards the middle, you started to use your hands, but because you're laying back like this, your hands were this way. When you're online and you lean back, it's kind of like standing in a room and just doing one of these. When you're giving a presentation, you want to make sure that you are sitting straight and when you're using your hands, watch your frame. I mean, you can watch yourself. You can see where you are. So you want to make sure your hands are coming far enough up to capture the essence. Consider removing some of those wishy words. I mean like, I kind of like. Those words are wishy words and we want to make sure you hit your target. And lastly, this was a great speech to add some humor. I have trophies. My wife thinks I'm a hoarder. I'm really not. There are a lot of things that you could have done that would have spruced up just a little bit of the humor. But overall, I enjoyed the essence of where the speech went. I thought you did a really good job. And my favorite part was that you ended with memories and asked them flat out, where were you when you heard that song, making all of us think back to a time in our life when we saw Robert Redford and Barbara Streisand on the big screen or heard the song, and I enjoyed having those memories come back. Thank you for your speech. I look forward to your next one, Mr. General Evaluator. Well, I kind of like that. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Lois. Always excellent evaluations. So now it is our time to hear from our awe counter, who is Lou. Lou, can you share with us what you have for us today? Of course, Mr. General Evaluator. <clears throat> Starting from the top, Dave, yes, excellent job with, I didn't hear any ums, although I did hear a couple of ands and several so's and even a couple of and so's. 
<laughs> and the popular word that you used was also actually. That seemed to be perhaps a new filler word. I hope, hope not, though. Overall, excellent job. Magda had a double clutch and an and. Christopher, some ands. One so. And let's see. I can't forget. Ah, just kidding. A little play on the word memory there. Lois captured some of the other items there. Deborah had a so and a couple of ums. BB, a couple of us. Cindy had one and. Lori, well done. I didn't catch anything there. Chris had one and. Elaine had a couple of so's and a couple of ums. Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Lou. And so uh, our next evaluator will be Jim. And of course, we'll always look forward to hearing from Jim. So take it away, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Working backwards through our speakers, Christopher used the word juxtaposition. Anytime that you can use a word that has the letter J and X in it at the same time, great. Really like that. You also use the word tchotchkes. Not an X, not a J, but it's still a great word. I love that. David, not to be outdone, you, you, you talked about the principle of reciprocity. Wow, that was really nice. You, but what really impressed me, David, and this isn't grammar per se, is your ability to talk and type at the same time. I'm someone, I have trouble chewing gum and walking at the same time, and you're able to type one thing and say another at the same time. I was impressed. That was a, that was a skill that I wish I had. However, at one point, David, you used the word putts. I don't have a problem with the word, but I'm pretty sure that it might be a North American word. I don't know if it's recognized. And since we're international, I'm not sure that it's recognized in Europe. Somebody could tell me, or if it's an Australian recognized word or something like that. So I would avoid maybe using the word putts unless you're sure you're talking to a North American office uh, audience. And that's it, Mr. General Evaluator. It was a great evening. Thank you so much, Jim. I always appreciate your feedback. Our next evaluation will be done by our watcher, which is Antoinette. Antoinette, can you share with us what you observed today? Firstly, I will start with my background. I know that it's a bit shimmery, but I have to work on it. And I noticed Cindy's background, which we are only seeing from her head up. I think it should be in from, a, from a, maybe six inches down her chest. And generally speaking, everybody more or less has professional background. Back to you, Jim. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Antoinette. We are going to now hear from our esteemed Vice President of Education, Mr. John. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. As chat monitor, I saw some lots of resources today, a few requests. I'm going to post the summary highlight of that so we can read them all over again and share in the memories of the chat today, Mr. General Evaluator. <laughs> Thank you, John. Always efficient with his words. I missed the bingo. I want to bring back bingo. <laughs> All right, uh, Graham, our timer, do you have anything further to share with us tonight? Uh, as you'll have seen, I've put all of the times up into the uh, chat box and everybody qualified tonight. I would make a couple of observations. Uh, and one of them was that because David was presenting to full screen, he was using a uh, shared screen and that would have meant, uh, I suspect that he couldn't see uh, the timekeeper. That's why I did a verbal uh, acknowledgement of the times that were happening. I noticed that it's through David and I do apologize for that, but I thought that he wouldn't have been able to see the timing otherwise. Uh, and I would say I also apologize to David because I think I might have missed giving him the green light. Uh, I hit the, um, uh, the, the browse button on my uh, but I forgot to actually activate it. So everybody was uh, qualified for time. Timing tonight was excellent. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be the timekeeper, Mr. General Evaluator. All right. Thank you very much. I really liked the, the way you used the background. 
I thought that was very clever, very well done. Thank you, sir. And our last person to present to us is our vote counter. So Jacinda, can you fill us in on how everyone did? Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Ladies and gentlemen, today was a real nail biter. It was so close, but there's only one winner in each category. Therefore, our best evaluator was Lois Margolin. Thank you for the drum roll. I think I heard it somewhere. <laughs> the best table topics winner is Chris Cold. And our best speaker is Thank you, Jim. Christopher Halls. Congratulations. Thank you, Mrs. Evaluator. Thank you, Jacinta. The drum rolls were very dramatic. I like that. Excellent, excellent meeting, everybody. Um, I really appreciate, first of all, that our, our evaluators, everyone was professional. I especially always find that our speech evaluations in this club are exceptional. We get what people did well, and we also get suggestions that all of us can take to heart on things that we can do better. The one thing that I noticed tonight is our word of the day, I don't even know what the word of the day was, but uh, <laughs> the, what was the word of the day, Jim? What was our word of the day? A tiger eats duenda. Can I just um, say that the word is on uh, the agenda now for a number of days. I also used it several times and referred to it throughout my presentation. Thank you. I was, I was making fun of the fact that I didn't hear, I don't know if anybody else used it. No, no one else used it. So, so that was I kind of... Good word for our members to go and check up on. <laughs> So anyway, um, that's unfortunate. That's a really good word. But in the future, when we have a word of the day, we should all be a little more cognizant of using it. Other than that, it was another wonderful meeting of online presenters. I will now turn the meeting back over to our esteemed Toastmaster. Magna. Thank you so much. And with that, it's the end of the meeting and I'm going to hand over to the, uh, our president and she is going to have a little intimate chat with everyone who visited us today. Please welcome Lois Mogolan. Thank you, Magda. May I just say fabulous job. And if I could think of how to get Duenda in, oh wait, can I say, Duenda to everyone, that I love everyone. Would that work, Magda? Hmm. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of items to go over. First of all, Jimmy Dent, you had asked about carrying votes. I see Andy had made a comment in there. Just so you know, last week we had voted. Carol Brahinsky is going to be carrying our vote, so you can reach out to either or both of those individuals. We had some fabulous overachievers in our club. Peggy Klaus, oh, let's see, I'm gonna call Jacinta. Jacinta, are you still online here? Yes. Can you tell us about some of this fabulous stuff that's going on? Oh, well, thank you, Madam President. Okay, if you have not checked your email, you missed some very exciting news. Peggy Klauser completed level one and level two of presentation mastery, which is exciting. We're very excited for her. And George Marshall recently completed his advanced leadership bronze. We'll be highlighting our members as we go through the process for the next year. Thank you very much. John, would you like to talk about our speechathon? For the speechathon, we're looking for a sponsor who will host a speechathon in August. Otherwise, Roger will pick back up in September. So, if you very badly want to have 
the speech is on. Wait, something's just coming in here. I'm going to do it on August 24th. Ah. Oh, I didn't hear from you about this until just Breaking now. news. Yeah. It's on August 24th. That's a Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. And Lois is hosting. Hey, so sign up. I don't want to be by myself. All right, Clarissa has joined our club for our officers. Please send your vote to our vote counter, Jacinta. So to be honest and all of that, we just want to make sure that we do everything on the up and up. So if you are an officer, send your vote to Jacinta. Clarissa was a member of Club Online Presenters back in 2017. Is that correct, Clarissa? 2017, there you go. So we are just looking for a quick vote to our vote counter. And now it's time for our guests to tell us what they thought. How exciting was this meeting for them or did they enjoy it? Phoebe, would you like to start? What did you think about the meeting? Oh, I love the meeting. This is my very first time attending an online meeting. And I love the word of the day. I totally forgot about it. One suggestion would be for the topics master to remind us, please use the word of the day. Because I, I would have loved it. It's such a lovely word. I've written it down. And then we'll remember to use it. I thought the meeting was very well run. And I like this club. I might consider joining this club. Great. Well, I'll tell you Especially, what, we'll circle back afterwards yeah. and ask you to use duende in a sentence. How's that sound? Up to you. Well, sorry, I was busy talking. I didn't quite hear that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll circle back. Okay. I like to talk about blogging, though. That's my, that's uh, what makes me want to join. Wonderful. We're very happy to have you and we look forward to seeing you next week. Let's see, Cindy Groover, how did you like, what did you think about the meeting? Can you hear me? I can. I, I apologize for coming in late. I thought it started at eight sharp and you would get in earlier to test your mic, etc. So I didn't have that opportunity to set myself up properly. Uh, now I know. So I missed the word of the day and I missed the agenda. Uh, I, I don't like the fact that you don't know when you're doing your ahs and ums until the report later on. So you're not cognizant real time. That I think is a weakness in this format. I love the diversity of people from all over the world, it appears. I think that we probably should all say where we're from uh, in our name. Cindy Gruber, Florida, USA, you know, that, that would be, make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. I know every now and then our names become what role we have, then it's where we are, then it's what level we're at. Our yeah. names just change every week. Sometimes we don't know who we are, but we are very happy to have you and we hope to see you again. Seldom. We didn't get a chance to hear from you. Can you unmute yourself? Can you hear us? And that would be Felix. Who that is Felix. Uh, okay. Felix. All right, Felix, you are unmuted. Would you like to introduce yourself? Where are you from? And tell us what you thought of the meeting. Felix, can you hear us? Okay, we're going to go ahead and come back to Felix. And Lori, where did Lori, there is Lori. What did you think of the meeting and where are you from? Oh, you're in Michigan. I'm in Michigan here in the US. And I would say that this group has lots of duende. There you go. <laughs> great, so I'm uh, probably come visit you again. I might even make it so you can actually see my face next time. I think I'm kind of obscured by the way my lighting is. So I apologize for that. But I enjoyed it. I saw a Facebook post. I think David, you had had posted something about the meeting, and you were going to be talking about blogging. So that's what what attracted me to see that. I've been to a number of online clubs. I'm not sure if I had been to this one yet, but I'm looking for an online club to join. 
All right. Well, we hope we see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Our Vice President of Membership, Elaine, would you like to say anything before we round this out? Well, for all, for all of the guests who actually come, bravo to you for having an intention, taking an action, and then actually showing up. Now, when we hit the 10 mark for guests today, I was getting a little bit scared. Like, how is that gonna work? Are we gonna be able to get uh, feedback from everybody? But as it turned out, the right people showed up to give their feedback, to experience the conviviality of, of our fine group. And uh, thank you so much for coming. We do hope you return. All right, well, thank you. We are rounding out right about five minutes to go. Is there any other questions or comments about the speech of on Magda? Yes, I just wanted to share my screen quickly and just let you listen to the word, the pronunciation of the word, mm -hmm. as it is in the dictionary, because I think it's such a beautiful word. Duende. 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 Stop, share. That's, that's enough now. <laughs> well, thank you, Magda. Next week, our Toastmaster of the Day is Deborah Spears. Let's give her some love and make sure all of the roles are taken care of. Thank you, Deborah, for stepping up. And that concludes, unless there is something else we need to talk about, then that officially ends the meeting. Everybody have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you next week. I will stay on for about five to ten minutes in case there are any other questions or we want to talk about technology or anything else. And we let everybody just kind of roll off a little bit. Um, thank you, Madam President, for an excellent meeting. Thank you, David, for a really good um, uh, outline of blogging. Um, I don't know who it was said in the chat. I did read it, but I can't remember that they, they had thought about doing a blog but hadn't uh, started it, and you've made it um, look painless. And, yes, uh, I have to say, using... Uh, Blogger, which I gather is something that uh, Chris Gould recommends, or using WordPress, which I know that um, you use. Blogging is actually not that difficult. What's difficult is coming up with something to say each time. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, that's, but yeah, no, thank, thank you very much for that. That was uh, really good. And also, um, uh, uh, thank you, Deborah, for your first table topics. They were some really good table topics. They got people thinking and talking, and you know, well done. I actually meant to mention, you know, if, if you're not a big writer, it can be the video of a speech and just, a, you know, just a few words to go along with that. Now, if you want it to be well indexed in Google and other search engines, you probably want about 400 to 600 words. But even, a, even just a couple of hundred and a good, good headline with a, you know, hopefully with a keyword in there that people might actually be searching for, uh, those, those are all good. Well, I have to say, David, I agree with Graham. I thought it was a really informative speech, and I enjoyed it immensely, as I did Christopher's. Both speeches were great. Oh, yes. You know, they had two different areas that they were going into, but I've been dabbling into the world of blogging, so this, to me, was an eye-opener about how easy it was. And I've used the WordPress, you know, for travel and stuff like that, but this was really an interesting speech. And Deborah, kudos to you. First time doing table topics. Woo! You did great. And I'm going to circle back to Graham. Thank you for keeping us on time and letting her know that we were finished with the table topics. I appreciate you staying on top of that as the timer. Very no good job. Antoinette. Yeah. How do you know when you come to the end of a blog? And how do you know you come to an end when, when you blog? Well, again, that's that's a writing question. It's not a, it's not really a technology question. It's oh, okay. uh, you know you you, you you try and find a, a good closing sentence or okay. uh, a link to another resource. Sometimes is the way you know. Sometimes so, sometimes uh, they don't really come to a firm conclusion. They just kind of wander off. If you want nice, strong structure, there's the idea of the callback. Um, you know, Dave Barry in humor does it a lot where 
you know, he starts off with, with some weird thing. He goes around in circles and then he ends with, and that would be a great name for a rock band. You know, mm. so, so, you know, those kind of patterns can, can, can be helpful, but uh, you can do whatever the hell you want, really, uh, particularly without, your own without, personal blog. Yeah. yeah. Without wishing to, uh, to, to plug mine, uh, I've just put the link to my blog site, cairnscommunications.com. Yeah, some of the uh, blog posts in there are perhaps five sentences. Some of them are the size of novellas. Um, <laughs> it'll give you an indication of how to start and finish, because this is what I do for a living. I write. So take a look. That may give you some ideas. Uh, as I say, I'm not doing it to... to, to, to plug my website I'm just this might be useful for you but blogging is literally a web log that's where the word blog comes from it is a web log it's it's like a diary entry that you're sharing to the world and you know yeah take a look you'll you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about and but yeah David some really good advice there so well done thank you and Lori did I see you had your hand up for a question no no I didn't. Oh. All um, right. Any other comments? Yeah. Congratulations, everybody. See you next week. Thank All you. right. Bye, Graham. Bye.